Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. Well, it's finally starting to look like spring here in Utah. And some flowers are starting to poke up and a, a few of the blossoms are out there, so I want to help it along. I like to turn flowers in spring. So last year I turned a bunch of these that you can look at uh, from there. I'll post the links down in the description. But for this year, I actually have to thank my friend uh, Vladimir Schwartzman because at a Saturday event that we had the other day, he showed me another style of flower and gave me a few tips on it. And I came home and I failed many times turning that flower. So I had to work on it and think of it a bit more. So that's what I'm going to do in this video today. I'm going to help you through the process, hopefully pave the way for you so that you can do it very easily. The style of flower is this one. It is turned from a uh, round of wood. The one thing uh, that helped a lot was to make myself a little template because I, you have to lay it out on there to try and get exactly how much of the side of the wood versus the wood versus having a tenon down here at the bottom. And that was that actually is mighty tough to visualize in 3D space with lines this way and that way and anyway. So, it, can, it is versatile. Here's another style from the same piece of wood, but it looks very different uh, just from the way it was cut. So, for this video, let's turn this flower. To start, I sliced a round from the end of an aspen log. The wood is well weathered and appears to be dry. Then I sliced the round in half for two flowers. At least for me, logically figuring out where to have the access is extremely difficult to visualize with the interaction of the mouth of the flower, the natural edge of the aspen, the turning axis, where to allow a tenon. Oh my! It helped immensely to use a paper grid. First, I cut the maximum possible size rectangle for the flower. Then I folded the paper in half and cut a profile. After flattening it out again, I can visualize where to place the flower. From previous failures, I ensure the axis is at least far enough from the cut edge to get a full round for the flower. If you do not believe me, try then try this layout without a paper template. You will risk brain trauma. Finally, trace my template and a second cut line that allows for a tenon to be used later. Please note that I want as much slope from the natural edge as possible crossing the flower. Brain cramp over. Now it is a simple matter to make another cut. At the drill press, I've marked the turning axis from the flower diagram at half of the width. Now drill through the slanted side to expose solid wood perpendicular to the turning axis. Again from previous failures, this hole should only be deep enough to expose solid wood and really no further. Additionally, the hole needs to be large enough for some slack around the drive center. Going too deep or too big would cause problems later. Finally, the challenge is to start a hole on the slope. Success! The little nibbles at the top of the hole will not be a problem. By the way, these clamps are not the current Vogue, but are very useful for this situation. Time for the lathe. The top of the flower is mounted towards the drive center. While this looks like a spindle project, it is more like a bowl project because the grain is running across the axis instead of parallel with it. Remember that when it comes to tool work. After a couple of test rotations, I'm off to the races. Since this is a cross grain, I start by cutting from the bottom. This will be the tenon area, but I'm only rounding it off for now. No finesse right now. More importantly, I switch to the top end. Again, I start my cuts from the top towards the bottom, but I'm cutting very gently. Not only is the wood square, but one surface slants. This is complicated because I want as much wood as possible for the top of the flower. I switch to left-handed cuts. I need the practice anyway. I stop frequently to check for flats on the edge of the flower. I also want a healthy flare for the flower. I'm cutting a lot of air. Turning up the speed does help.
Finally, the exterior is cut down to where the lowest part of the opening is. I switch again to the other end to waste off a lot of wood. The only requirement here is to cut a tenon for my smallest jaws. I always measure with the lathe off. No risk of points digging in for me. I hear other demonstrators always warn of this risk, but I would rather avoid it altogether. Now to swap the drive center for a chuck. In previous attempts, I was tempted to drill for the interior of the flower. That was nearly always a mistake. However, I do want a quarter inch hole for a stem. The only way to drill is to come from this end. The flower is longer than my drill, so instead I start hollowing with my bowl gouge down to solid wood. While I am at it, I cut down to my target wall thickness. Just remember that this is more of a bowl project than a spindle project. Now I can drill that quarter inch hole for the stem. The hollow now allows my Jacobs chuck to enter in and I can drill deeper into the base wood. I did not need to dig out my long bit with all of its flexing. Now I can finish hollowing. Plus there is a benefit of the center hole. It is important to get the interior shape now while there is still a lot of wood at the base. The exterior will come shortly. Now I can cut the exterior. Remember that this is more like a bowl than spindle. I think I've said that. Here is now the downside. The wood is cross grain with a very small diameter. Danger, Will Robinson. I do not want a UFO when that grain shears off. Instead, I'm using a faceplate on the drive live center. The long, fatter tenon puts pressure on the bottom of the flower hollow. Then a quarter inch dowel extends into that hole I drilled earlier. Now I can complete the exterior, mostly with my spindle gouge, including rounding off the bottom of the flower. Without that dowel, this would certainly fly away or require a lot of hand sanding. Plus, I do not want, plan to sand any of this. Final parting off is anticlimactic. This leaves my flower a bit weird. It needs a bottom part that I believe is called a receptacle. While I am at it, how about a stigma? I chose an offcut of paddock. First I work the tenon. This will do double duty. A mount for the flower and become the stigma as it pokes through the bottom. Despite the tight quarters, this is fairly standard spindle work. Besides fitting the hole, I shape the area just above the tenon. Then reverse the paddock and start drilling. I do not have any room for error, so I start the hole with a small starter bit, then switch to the standard quarter inch bit. Then finish the remainder with a skew. That completes another flower style. Be sure to also rewatch my videos of about a year ago for more flower styles. I thank Vladimir for introducing me to this style. I think it is a very pretty style and very versatile. Plus, it is not too difficult, once I know how. Hopefully, this video spares you my fault starts. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website because it's more reliable than YouTube for notifications, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I create a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. My best safety tip, you are worth saving and this can help.